Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1970s. They come here, they have a pretty nurse, then they can do a little something, bing, bing, bang, bang, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, and they study the liquid and tell you if you have a hereditary disease, or if your gun's jammed, if you know what I mean. This is episode 149, recorded September 20th, <laughs> 2021. Magazine. I am your host, Doc Rodden, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host Jeff Moore and I will tackle another classic or not-so-classic film from this wonderful, groovy, gory, and influential decade. With me this week are my co-hosts, starting off with the one and only Jeff Moore. Jeff, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great. You have no idea how thrilled I was that there were no cats in this movie. Meow. I thought, also, sure, there was going to be a bunch of them. Yes, <laughs> nine of them at least, right? Mm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but it's a different thing altogether. All right. Also joining us tonight is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, and all around nice guy. How you doing, Bill? There's all the cats. There's, all, I, the there's cats. all the cats that we didn't get in the movie. I. Conversely, was disappointed that there were at least nine fewer cats than I expected. So. Nine fewer. Wasn't there one? No, 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 maybe not. All right. Also joining us is Chad Hutt, comic cars and co-host of the Decades of Horror Classic Era and every other <laughs> Decades of Horror show out there. All the airs. <laughs> yes. Uh, Chad of Nine Tales. Sarah, how are you doing? I am fine and dandy, Doc. That's the Thanks for asking. Be. Best way to be, is it not? Mm-hmm. Not only are you fine, you, sir, are you? How, how are you, Doc? How are you? Yeah, yeah nobody I'm, asks. Nobody cares. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we care. Oh, Group hug, everybody. Oh, Bring oh. it in. Uh, <laughs> I am, I'm a mess. All right. Uh, we are reviewing <laughs> Cat of Nine Tales. This is from director Dario Argento. Back in 1971, uh, this is going to be fun. What we're going to do is give our you know first impression when we first saw this. Was it back in 71? Or was it 71 minutes ago? We'll find out. Um, then we'll get into a big, happy discussion about this film. If you've seen an episode of this, you know what we're in for. But let's uh, let's take a look at the CAD, shall we? All right. I love this picture. That's so mm. it's like I'm going to rest nice my head. Nice dental hygiene, film. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Cat on Tales, 1971, directed by Dario Argento, written by Dario Argento, Luigi Cosi, and Dardano Sacchetti. The cast includes, and it's not limited to, James Franciscus, Carl Malden, Catherine Spike, Spack. I wanted to say Spank, but that's not right. It's Catherine oh. Spack. Spock. Spock. I don't know. Oh, I don't my know. goodness. I don't There's, know. How do you do two A's together? I don't know. Pierre, Piala. Spock. I would say Spock. Uh, yeah. I don't the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. ever do that to her. But anyway, release date was February 12th, 1971 in Italy. May 26, 71 in the U.S. The budget was an estimated one million dollars, and it made 2.9 million or 2.4 billion pounds. So it was no uh, lira. Lira, that's lira, uh, and that's actually 3.9 million, which I'm having a hard time believing. But that's hmm? that's what the uh, conversion factor was for 1971. Okay, wow. Are you, I, I am geographically challenged, and the monetary part of it goes with it. I have no idea what anything is. Two hashes. Right. Two, Two hashes. hashes. <laughs> I knew uh, the synopsis of the newspaper reporter and a retired blind journalist tried to solve a series of killings connected to a pharmaceutical company's top secret experimental research projects. In doing so, they become targets of the killer themselves. And this guy keeps biting inside of his cheek over and over again. Oh, that's oh, stop. Pharmaceutical oh, companies stop. are always. <laughs> what have they ever done for us? This is before. This is even before they became the big bad, right? This is predates All right. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, okay. Jari and Gento films. We've covered a few, mm -hmm. and a couple of his classics are in the seventies. One, at least, that everybody knows. At two. least two. Two, if you really dig into it, to be sure. Let's find out when we first saw this. Whose choice was this? It was mine. All right, Bill, you start off. Not going to pass sorry. out cats. Um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> what was, what was, I when did you saw, first see this? I saw this back in seventy-one minutes ago. Literally, I had oh, forgotten wow. about the Monday switch, and and I was um, like, 
yeah, I think I'll go home and chillax and do a little thing, and maybe we can watch the movie tonight because we're going to be, oh, no, it's tonight. So I had to race home as soon as I could and uh, watch it. So, um, yeah, it's fresh on my mind. It's it's just one of those ones it, I never saw it in a mo in a video store. You know, there were there were few Dario Argento's that I I went for, and I had heard that this was not a uh, a horror so much as a giallo and a fair, you know, not not over the top. So I didn't feel uh, in a big rush to seek it out. But then when I saw that it was there, it's like, yeah, let's let's see what the early stuff looks like, and I like it, but it's. It's not, if you go in expecting Dario Argento, you might be a little disappointed because this is about the most subdued I think he's ever been. It's a, a reasonably straightforward detective story with little, with bits of giallo and, and, and a few touches that, you know, remind yourself, yeah, this is, this is Dario, but much more emphasis on the actors. I never really thought of Argento as, as a very great acting director. You know, director of actors, but he had two American hired hands here, and I thought they both acquitted themselves pretty well. I know this is not one of his favorite movies. In fact, Doc, you were telling me it's his least favorite of all his movies. I know. Who, who knew? Who knows? I mean, has has Dario Argento seen Dario Argento's Dracula? Because I think he might uh, reassess his evaluation. If so, he'd be the only one. Ah, yeah, that could be it. But no, not true, but yeah. <laughs> I I feel like I you know because this came right after Bird with the Crystal Plumage, and I feel like that was a big hit. So they pushed this one on him, and they gave they they maybe they forced him to take some American actors when he didn't really want to because that sometimes happens. I thought both the guys did a great job, Carl Malden especially. I thought it was terrific here, but you know maybe it's not so much fun directing people when. You're directing them and everyone else in Italian. And these guys are English speaking. So, but I enjoyed it. I, I, I'm glad I picked it. Um, it's not hardcore horror by any means, but you can start, you see, you see the elements that Argento would start expanding on later. The camera work and, and some of the visuals are very striking. It's a subdued Argento movie, but I think it's pretty interesting. Yeah. There's definitely a few kills in this that mm -hmm. get, you start approaching it. There, there's a few that get that mean spiritedness. The, oh, the, one, okay. the one woman being killed is like, yeah, okay. There's the Argento touch, dang. Yeah. And yeah, well, the train. I would say the train. All right. <laughs> that yeah. was pretty. That was pretty sweet. All right, Chad of Nine Tails, sir. Well, when did you first see this <laughs> wonderful, wonderful film? Uh, yesterday. Hey! For the first time, yeah. I, I, I don't. I've said it, I think, before on here, but I'm not a big Giallo fan. Um. I just find them kind of boring, you know, uh, sometimes, that's, but that's just me. I know there's a lot of people that do like them, but uh, if it wasn't for this podcast, I probably would have passed on this a long time. I've heard of it. Um, with it being Argento, you read Fangoria, you read any magazine, you've heard of Bird with crystal, the Crystal Plumage and, and, and cat of nine tails and all of those, but it never really, there was nothing really there to, to catch my attention. So, um, I expected Suspiria, but I got an episode of streets of San Francisco. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm just joking there, but, um, what are you? What are you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was I was glad to see James Franciscus here and Carl Carl Malden. Um, I thought if it wasn't for them, I would have not liked this movie as much as I did. And I did I did enjoy this movie. Um, like Bill said, it's not straight out horror. It's it's very much a detective um, detective movie, uh, a mystery murder mystery movie. Or they're trying to catch a killer. Um, and I like the whole idea of the XYY uh, chromosome. Uh, good idea. I, I thought that was a pretty interesting idea. But I really loved the performances by the two lead actors, uh, James Franciscus and Carl Malden. Loved what Carl Malden did mm -hmm. in this movie. It, it was just a fantastic performance by him. And James Franciscus was pretty much just being James Franciscus you know, tough guy, uh, sort of uh, hero type or whatever. 
um, take charge kind of guy. I like like that. Um, and had a couple of cool cool murder scenes in there that some of them I didn't really understand <laughs> what was going on uh, at times. But um, but uh, yeah, it was a good little good little movie, and I, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. There you go. Well, surprise, surprise. Yeah. All right, Jeff Moore, sir. You're up next. When did you first see this? And what was that impression like? Man? Well, I first saw this a couple of weeks ago when Bill picked it. And <laughs> then I watched it again last night. Um, it, you're right. I, I think this is more like, you know, uh, what the, the Giallo tradition comes from the books. And I think this probably fits the books. It's, it is far more mystery than it is a mm-hmm. horror movie, even though there's some some kind of cool stuff, some bloody stuff. And uh, Carl Malden plays a great, great blind guy with a saber in his cane or whatever, yeah. a dagger at the end of his cane. Um, so I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the mystery of it because I like stuff like that. So it it had me going and, I, and I'm with Bill too. There's some things in there. There's some shots of, uh, you know, stairwells that are really kind of yeah. geometric yeah, and yeah. interesting. He kind of gets into that. Uh, a few colors, not nothing like he, he ends up with in uh, films like Suspiria, but it is that, and, and the killer is, uh, just sort of sneaking around. All we ever see is his uh, hands and his feet, I think, until nice. right at right his at the eyeball. end. Uh, oh, his eyeball, that's right. We see a, although, uh, you know, if I could tell yeah. from a streaming Subliminal. video what color his eyes were, I might have been able to narrow it down a little bit. But uh, so, yeah. Always red, yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed it. And I think it's kind of interesting. It falls right in there. I think it's the first one after uh, Bird of the Crystal Plumage and then uh, what? There's maybe a couple before he hits deep red at 75. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's you can see the progression. It's kind of fun to see uh, how they progress towards where they're going to, you know, once they get to like uh, to uh, Suspiria and Opera, et cetera. Yeah, nine times more suspenseful. <laughs> and I did see, you know, it would have been kind of fun to see one of those whips since that's the name. Mm-hmm. But Nine Tails itself, yeah. Uh, I, um, yeah, it's not the, the is it, is it uh, Chinese or Japanese? The Nine Tails, the Fox with the Nine Tails. Anyway, that's totally different. And I, this one, I'll have to be honest with you. I, I didn't even know this was Argento until we watched it. I had totally. <laughs> block this one out of all knowledge um i probably i knew it was jollo and that was about it i didn't know the cast and i was running really really late getting this and i watched this at one o'clock in the morning last oh wow night. saying well i was like well no, you didn't. <laughs> i better i better watch this because if i don't they're gonna yell at me so i, I yeah i stayed up at three o'clock in the morning watching this oh, and wow um, it kept it kept me awake and kept my attention. I really enjoyed it. But the funny thing was, I was like, "Man, that blind man's like an Italian Carl Malden. And then <laughs> there turned out it was Carl Malden. I was like, "What the hell?" Yeah. And then he bumps into a guy, and I said, "That looks like James Francis." It is James Francis. I had no idea. Um. So that was a surprise for me. So last night is the first time I saw it, and uh, I I actually really liked it. I thought this was fun. It was. It, it started out a little odd and I was trying to figure out, you know, why we're following the people we're following. Mm-hmm. But after a short bit, it didn't matter. Um, I liked the idea that, you know, these two, uh, you know, different types of uh, journalists are, you know, basically get together and are trying to solve yeah. this and they have different methods and, and it's really interesting how they work off each other. It makes for a really nice pairing. They work well together. And some of the best scenes are just when they're in there, you know, to, across from each other. Although I watched the Italian version, so the only dubbing was for the English actors, so that was really strange. I don't know if the uh, the dub version of it puts their voices back in, but I doubt it. And so that would be even weirder. I don't know. You guys ought to tell me. Um, and I'm pretty sure that James Francisco acts like he's never seen a pair of boobies before in this movie because that was a pretty strange love scene when it they was. get together. 
It, it he was, gives her the stare, doesn't he? He does. He's just like, look at that. She, like, she yeah. covers herself up like, okay, this is awkward now. <laughs> no, and, and then oh, it was the strangest love scene ever put on film. Uh, it has a couple of really fascinating kills throughout it. Uh, you know, we mentioned a few of them. Uh, the, you know, the train, the girls, the, you know, there's a couple these really so often violent um, mm. strangulations. And then there's one where he, you know, starts like slicing up the guy's face. And it's like, wow, man, this thing, this thing got brutal at times. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, it's, you know, it's one, one of the things that Italian films would do and American films rarely ever do is put the children in harm's way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as Carpenter. That's not the thing to do, right? That's right. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about that film someday. The hmm. um, I, don't, I don't know. I really I really liked it. I like the you know who's double crossing who element of it. And at one point, you're even you're wondering about Carl Malden himself. And, yeah, it's and, like whoa. Um, yeah, like, worried about the barber. The barber the scene. Bar- <laughs> the barber was funny. The barber scene was so good. You um, worried about the barber for totally different reasons. Than I, I yeah, <laughs> I will say that. That that was. I'm glad you mentioned that because that was the moment I became fully invested in the film. Was when yeah. every, the barber doesn't realize that. That was such a funny was, bit too, and and, oh my. and it holds true. I, I've never understood why anyone would allow anyone. To, to shave them with one of those death instruments that it just, I, I, I ugh. Uh, you'd have to, I'd have to trust this barber. Know your barber. Trust. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, yeah. Sorry, scissor, scissors are less, uh, less uh, obviously threatening, but just as deadly if you want. I suppose they could be, but, uh, uh, you know, a, a razor blade, to your throat yeah or something else what well, if the guy but, sneezes i've never seen anyone sneeze and cut off their finger with a scissors but hmm. hey there's an idea for a movie and how much closer can it get than a regular safety shade you know a safety razor i mean you use that if you use it well uh your your face feels like a baby's rear end how much deeper could anything possibly go it's the experience it is it's the experience of the hot lather and the and the and the sharpening the blade death. on the on the leather strap. Yeah, yeah. Maybe this guy's yeah, maybe yeah. this guy's having a bad day. Maybe his wife's been yanking his crank, and he's just really all tense and like a coiled <laughs> spring. And oh okay, yeah, sure, right here, right where the carotid artery is. Now, if it was going. a monkey, Bill. Oh God, no, there you are. You know, maybe it's maybe it's the razor that I fear more than the monkey. No, it's the monkey. Yeah, monkey. What, what are we doing again? I think yeah, there's a musical um, I want to uh, have Bill watch. Um, <laughs> let's. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. I what, what do we want to say about this film? Because it, it to me it feels. I don't know when, Jalo films became Jalo films. You know, like a thing, but this feels like on the cusp of it becoming something. Um, it's if it you know I don't, you know it's obviously it's a year after Crystal Plumage, but I, I'm not as well versed in this subgenre as I am yeah. just about every other single subgenre. I mean, it's several years after, and you know, he had to bring his name up, Mario Bava's Blood and Black Lace, which is mm, yeah. way more of what we think of as, you know, the stereotypical giallo, lots of blood, black gloves, the killer and everything. This Ooh. is more, this feels more like a, a, a giallo, but crossed over with the police procedurals, which were pretty crime dramas, which were very popular in Europe and never, never really got over here. So it's not something that we're familiar with that much. Even though they're journalists, not really police detectives. Right? Well, and, so they're both journalists. Well, the police well, are usually useless in these things. And they were. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad. Okay. The scariest thing in this movie <laughs> is that girl's driving. And it was oh my so gosh. Yeah. It was that so was funny. great. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? That does that does that seem like they they decided they wanted Argento wanted to do a uh, uh, an Italian bullet? Yeah. <laughs> oh no! But James, Fran- James Francisco's holding on to the chicken bars was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I wonder. Life. So I wonder if yeah, no, I mean going down, she's driving fast through very narrow passageways and then down into the underground. Anyway, um, I'm wondering if 
So one of the things I noticed is it lists Brian Edgar Wallace as a co-writer of the screenplay, even though he's uncredited. Hmm. And it turns out that Brian Edgar Wallace is Edgar Wallace's son. And I don't know if you watch movies from the forties, he's a famous British oh. or thirties and forties, famous British uh, mystery writer. Um, and it says that like his father, uh, he became a writer of thrillers and among his final projects was a writing collaboration with Dario Argento. This led to Argento's first three Giallo thrillers. So maybe that was a, an influence that kept him more, more grounded in mystery. Maybe. Hmm. I don't know. Cause it is very much a, a who done it. Also a why done it. We, we don't really know until the end, not just, you know, who the killer is, but why he's doing these things. And I'm, I, yeah. I'd have to, I'd have to watch it again to see if it all holds together. Cause it does seem like this guy is always exactly one step ahead. Yeah. Like literally five minutes ahead of everybody else, which I don't know. And, and it, the movie doesn't start off with a murder. It just starts off with a, a simple robbery or at least a break in. They actually don't say anything's, stolen and that mm -hmm. we find out what mm -hmm. that's all about later too so it's really interesting is that the murders happen because somebody's looking into the robbery right yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well it's it's well laid out as a mystery i mean the way that uh it's really kind of neat how i think it, one of the opening scenes isn't that uh with with uh god yeah. malden malden and the and his granddaughter or niece Nephew, mm -hmm. niece, too many Christmas. One of those. Uh, <laughs> Carl Malden and his niece walking down the street, and they go past his car, and he hears a conversation going on, and he stops to tie his shoe and asks her to look at him, and then later, when the guy in the car is uh, killed, run over by a train, as was in uh, Doc's first slide. Uh, that's which is particularly gruesome the way the body is tumbled kind of under twist, the train. Yeah, it just yeah. twisted around. And she recognizes the guy. So that I mean, I think it's really I really like the way it's laid out. In terms of a mystery, you learn mm -hmm. things. Just like uh, you know, when you find out that the eventual killer is one of the suspects because they're looking at who is who is Dr. Tersey's uh, assistants, right? And there's the 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 uh, the, the eccentric gay german guy and uh two other people so yeah. one's younger and the other one's uh and of course the girl is she a femme fatale is you know, right right and especially when she just happens to cut her hand at the same time that someone's injured i mean that was oj's excuse and nobody bought that either ah, oh my god it happens all the time yeah. she didn't wear it. she didn't try the glove well i remember her from it was my age i'm telling you when I was an uh, usher at the theaters, I saw her in The Libertine, which is hmm. which she is nude a very high percentage of the time in that movie. Um, and so, I, and that name stuck in my mind for one reason or another, I think because of yeah. the two A's, right? Yeah. The double A's? <laughs> Don't say it. Oh, no. uh, anyway. <clears throat> So I knew I, it was weird. I knew who she was. I, I I don't know how many people would. She's got a decent amount of uh, credits, but that's she's the only thing look. I can think of. She's got. Yeah, she's, she brings a real sure. glamorous touch to to the film, and I think she acquits herself real well. She's she doesn't start out as terribly likable, but as as it goes on, you're, she manages to make you like her, and then suspect her, and then. And then, unfortunately, she sort of drops out. I, I, I kind of expected to see her more toward the final. In fact, the whole, the whole ending of the movie, to me, is the one kind of flat note. Things just sort of end. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind of what happens. Yeah. Well, sure, in real life. but mm. No, I mean, in the in these films, they kind of just... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. a lot of times they do. It's just like, well, we're out of money. Yeah, time to go. <laughs> There's time your go 90 ahead. minutes. Go home. Yeah. Well, see, hey, I liked her... I liked her she had i don't know i like this character i you know her from her hairstyle to the style of the clothes to the way she was acting the only thing i didn't care for was the love scene because it was so awkward, it was awkward. i don't know why i was talking about that um 
Well, it was it was awkward. It was first of all, it was a terrible line that he gives her. What was that? You know, do you know that on average, uh, yeah. nine hundred seventy-eight yeah, 700... people make love every. I don't know what what the odds were every what day, like every year. What? And he goes, I would hate to lower the average. Like, wow. That's... And he immediately unbuttons the top button of his <laughs> yeah shirt, just like. Oh. And then it becomes the uh, cat of nine tails stare down. I uh, know oh, it's so weird. <laughs> and then they're. Like motionless love scene. I don't know what the <laughs> There's always one hand that, that's going <laughs> you know, like that's a, an indication yeah. of the passion that's going on in this scene. <laughs> Just the hand grabbing something. It's it's such a brief nude scene too. You feel like I mean, I guess obviously if she's in the libertine, I guess it didn't matter, but you feel like, well, wow, you know, you really shouldn't need to do this nude scene here because it's over and done with and, and frankly his reaction is so odd. <laughs> And it, I think, and his reaction, the way I interpreted it, it, it his reaction embarrassed her. And so she kind of covered yeah, up uh, okay. a little bit or something. But then it I was like, that's what you wanted, but all right. Yeah. Tell then it was on true. like Donkey Kong, you know? Yeah. I, don't know. I didn't get it. Mixed messages. I don't know. Yeah. Till the break of dawn. Drink, but don't drink the milk. Don't drink the milk. <laughs> yeah, don't drink the milk. <laughs> I, I think I think if he hadn't knocked it out of her hand, she would still be slowly bringing it I to know. her lips. Frankly, when, when he was like listing off the the suspicious things that, that she did, it's like, yeah, you know, she she really did drink that milk very slowly. Uh, you know, I'm like Spock I'm about to drink the milk Spock unless the someone knocks it out of my mouth. I, I'm gonna say I thought that was the greatest misdeduction ever in the history of cinema because it was just like. <laughs> You really think that I'm? <laughs> yeah, it's just so hilarious. Makes oh no my sense. God. Um, I, I want to uh, change the tone here and just have a, a funny little moment with and um, take a, a nice loving jab at one of our close friends of the show. Um, we oh. didn't know that a very young Sammy Castle was. In the film. Oh, there he is! Um, Look at him. Uh, <laughs> We um we didn't know Sammy Castle GG the loser looked like the GG the loser. Yes, yeah. like the loser. Um, I didn't know Sammy made movies in Italy. I, he's uh -huh. he's truly a a, a man of many yeah. talents. That long ago, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Look at that like, that chin. He's, he's aged amazingly well. He yeah. has like Bruce Campbell's jealous of that chin. <laughs> that is that's wonderful. That guy was great. I like you know they went to great expense to make the lock his genius of lock picking experience oh, yeah. was real, you know, putting all those mm -hmm. little gadgets together and filing them down. I love when he sits he just goes and sits was that his car or just some random car? He just sits in the car and he starts, you know, pulling out all this stuff and the, and James Francis is like going, What's going on here? And then they <laughs> sneak in the house. Oh, it was just hilarious. I uh, another scene in here that we should bring out is you know, I think somebody mentioned um the one character is is gay in this film and they go to a gay bar and he uh james francis confronts him in this game gay bar and wants to talk to him and it's i for 1971 i think this is very interesting um it's definitely the difference between an american film oh, and yeah. an italian yeah. film uh, because you know you have cross dressers in there and you have all you know the uh, you know it, it's even I mean, he even flirts with James Franciscus and tells him about. Yeah, but there's no there's no judgment there. You compare that no, to something like all. advice and consent in America. I mean, but this is I think wasn't that also the case in Deep Red that we had a character that was shown to be like in a relationship with someone who was transgender. This is way back when, and you you don't get the sense that we're we're being led to believe that these people are potential murderers because they're gay. It's just one one more aspect to their personality, and and. It turns out they're not the guilty party, so it had nothing to do with that. Uh, yeah, I mean, for its time, that's pretty progressive, really. 71, 71 60 Minutes could still do like uh, a news article on the gay rights movement, and it's like the most horrifying thing you've ever seen if you've ever watched it. So, yeah, they were. he was definitely ahead of the curve on this one. Yeah, I, f I found that really interesting just from a time period point of view. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, and they absolutely made no. It, it it actually had very little impact on the story, you know, as far as being a suspect because, or you know, the killer because, or losing his job because, you know, it it, 
didn't have mm-hmm. an impact in that way. It was really interesting. Um, and Franciscus didn't look like he was angry or repulsed by the fact that this guy was clearly kind of hitting on him. I know. He was like, oh, my no. eyes really do already have the red in him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, yeah. really? <laughs> but, but, as an, but as an audience, as a viewer, I'm like, he keep, he's mentioning how pretty James Franciscus's eyes are. And we keep getting that flash to the eyes. Is there something about eyes? So, I mean, I thought that was deliberately put in there yeah, to make us think right. that this guy might be and then, uh, admittedly this is one of those mysteries where when the killer is revealed he's given a reason but they literally could have given that reason to any of the suspects yeah it's there's... you know it's not like it's not like an agatha christie where when you put it all together oh this guy was obviously the villain if you've been paying attention from the get-go and knew which clues are right it, it was pretty much they reached into a hat and said yep that's the guy who did it yeah. here's and, the reason and, and also to be honest by the time we get it we've already eliminated the other eight, right? I mean, didn't we? They, yeah. Didn't they go through each and every one? Either they're dead or... They well, yeah, they it. killed four or five of them. So. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Running out of suspects. A and classic a couple, blunder. Right? Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. But the ending was kind of kind of, kind of interesting. You know, the fight on the roof and, yeah. um, you know, it was kind of obvious how it was going to end. But um, I thought, you know, there was a couple of really tense moments where you know, James Francisco's descent flying down these metal roofs and then, you know, where's he going to land? Then, you know, lands on like this little concrete ledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he he badly hurt too. He's got a knife sticking out of his shoulder and stuff. That's, yeah. that's right. He does. It almost seems like that's the kind of thing like they're, they're showing the magician's trick. He slides all the way down that roof and goes over the edge and then they show the camera shot and it's yeah. like a foot below the edge. <laughs> <laughs> But that's great. I mean, it's really great <laughs> cinema. I mean, it was it was yeah. quite quite well done. I mean, you do see the flourishes. I mean, like when he sees the blood on his hand, he goes back in there, he looks up. Yeah, and right. you mm-hmm. see the blood. I mean, you see these early tale signs of Argento style. They're, they're in here. Mm-hmm. And I think, Jeff, you mentioned, you know, the uh, architecture and especially yeah, the stairs. Yeah. Um, it just, uh, and and then also the the investigation part of it, felt very deep red in a lot of ways, you know, you know, mm-hmm. going from suspect to suspect and location to location. Although deep red is, you know, makes that much more has use. a lot more weirdness. Yeah. There's no makes much more use of those locations, right? Yeah. Um let's let's take a look at the posters, Shelly. Um I think I want of, that top one. I want I want a big copy of that. I didn't even notice at first the little girl snuggled up against the cat. It was just, I yeah, I think the there's a uh, a 4K so, version of that available mm-hmm. from Arrow. Yeah, that is Arrow, and then um, that is that the original poster down below. I think so. Mm-hmm. And there then a couple of versions. Of some of the ah, the Neunschwanziger Katze. Mm-hmm. Katze. You always love that. The nine-tailed cat. The Neunschwanziger. <laughs> Don't shake your Schwanziger at me. Nah. <laughs> got to no, him. please do not. Um, Carl Malden, of course. Uh, what a, just a good actor, just an all-around good actor. I mean, not not a handsome leading man, <laughs> no. but but as a character actor, I mean, he he can emote. He does not go over the top. And there seemed to it really felt like there was a genuine affection between him and the little girl. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And like, there was a, a a really nice rapport and respect between him and Francisco. So it, it was really well done. In that yeah. yeah. Uh, so to answer your question earlier, Bill, they are dubbed. Dubbing their own voices on the. Oh, thing. okay. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah, I thought it sounded like Carl Malden speaking. He has well, a very would, distinctive yeah, voice, so it would be a mistake know. not to get him. Yeah. Now, uh, Chad, you mentioned that you know Carl Malden and James Francisco would you know go on. You know, you you said it felt like a streets of San Francisco. Of course, Carl Malden became a detective on that. And then James Francisco later became a detective on a thing called Long Street. Long Street. The irony, Long Street. In this, the irony yeah. of this is that James Francisco played a blind detective in Long Street. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 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 Long Street's got an amazing episode with Bruce Lee before Bruce really? Lee was famous. Yeah. 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 And, and oh, wow. it's one of the best performances, yeah. I think, from Bruce Lee. I, I figured Bill picked us because after Beneath the Planet of the Apes, he just wanted. More, more James Francisco. Francis. I want yeah. a Valley of Guanji, but uh, you know, you gotta go to a different show. You gotta go to a different show, for that. <laughs> yeah. and 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 have it find it on streaming because it's one of those things they don't oh. tend to stream for some reason. 
Uh, Malden won an Oscar for On the Waterfront, so yeah, he's no. Mm. And he was he was good here. Um, they wrote the character in a smart way too. Yeah. Um, like the scene um, where they were robbing the grave and they found the the locket and and James Franciscus was having trouble finding. It. He goes, "Bring it here!" And he sort of was using his fingers to find the hidden compartment and um, and all the things he was saying about. Uh, he was asking the little girl to tell him who was in the car because he heard the conversation. Um, you know, stuff stuff like that that was written. They didn't just make him a bumbling yeah. blind guy. You know, he no, he, was, he was smart and very adept and knew what he was doing and that. But he wasn't. He they, wasn't. Zombie. He wasn't superhuman or anything. Right. Like right. He was just. I, he was able. I mean, he. Was I would have liked to have seen more movies with this team. I think this this had yeah, the potential yeah. to do other stuff. They, I thought it was neat the the whole uh, Crawford puzzle setup that he had there was kind of interesting. And then he was doing something like was he doing tile cutting? It looked that way, yeah. Yeah, that way. and and then making a uh, what was the name of that show? I don't remember it now, but where I think it was Concentration. You turned over the matches, and then it made a right. Uh, so there was like CL and an ear, and then something else, combination of letters and pictures to make it. But I could, they didn't ever really explain why he was doing that. I mean, he wasn't like a puzzle creator. Uh, hmm. I, I just found that interesting. Well, he kept making reference that he loves puzzles. Yeah. 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 And uh, so, but he was a cool yeah. character, very interesting. And very interesting. I would like Bill said, I'd like to see that character again in another movie. Um, yeah. Well, we, we've seen, okay. So I was confused because we've seen, haven't we seen blind men with hats in other Argento films or am I mixing it up with other Jolo films? Uh, isn't there a blind guy in Suspiria? Yeah. He gets killed by his dog. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, anyway, I don't, I'm not, I don't know what the connection is other than the visual. So. And then there's the blind, uh, that, now I'm thinking of Fulci. But uh, I, I mean, eyes in general, just eyes are a big part of the Italian giallo, Italian zombies. There's just something about it. If it's a zombie movie, you know, the eyes are going to get poked out. Mm. <laughs> Stop. Oh, my God. Yeah. All right. Well, let's return to uh, Catherine uh, Spock again. Spock. Spock. Um, she's very pretty. She's pretty, she, and, and she's, got a, she's got a neat look to her. Glamorous. And, and she's still active. She's still is active. she good for her? Yeah, yeah. Her hairdo does not look of the time at all. <laughs> well, what that, reminds me, doesn't it though? Uh, I mean, in, in yeah, the Libertine, yeah. she had that color, I think, but straight, you know, more like. And and in my opinion, she looked like my sophomore English teacher, which probably had <laughs> that might have a lot to do. With I'm it. not going there, I'm not, I'm not going <laughs> where that led to, but not her uh, teacher. Oh, so, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why Jeff failed English three times. Things, things, you know, they they gradually come back to me. <laughs> gradually, well, you're Grad, right. gradually. Um, <laughs> and then we have uh, uh, Cynthia de Corrales, who plays the young girl, who um, actually has a lot more to do in this film than you would expect, right? Especially mm -hmm. toward the end when. Start smacking her around. That yeah. that that made me a little mad. Yeah, I did. She's she's good. She's she has a really natural presence. Kid actors can be real hit or miss, and I, I didn't get the sense from her that she was, you know, acting so much. It, it was I thought a really good performance. And and again, the affection between. I, I'd be interested to know. It, it, it did was he like playing the part of grandpa on the set as well? Because that seems like something that an actor of that generation, you know, if you're going to work with kids, a lot of them said, yeah, working with kids can be a mess, but they would, you know, take the kids under their wing and everything and, and, and really do a good job with them. It just, I really liked how they got along so well. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it felt natural, right? It felt yeah. Very yeah. natural. Yeah. Uh, and of course we talked about style. There's Jeff's scene at the top. Yeah. And, and there's yeah. one of the most <laughs> ludicrously, <laughs> I just made up a new ad room. Um, executed kills. I mean, it's just, it's wonderful. Well, that, 
but it, it is. is just so. But that that particular shot was such a quick cut. You barely yeah. had a you had a feeling of motion from it. I, I thought I mean, well, somehow he went from getting hit by the, the bumper on the train here in the front to getting his head caught between the train uh, and the, yeah, yeah. the level his body and twisting and uh, doing oh. a death roll as the train keeps going. I don't know how he got from this point to the other point. I think I laughed when they did this shot, but then immediately they follow it with the, the follow up. And I'm like, Oh, I'm not laughing oh, now. No, now I'm kind of cringing. Oh. I do like the photograph investigation, though, behind it, where, you know, they just automatically cropped it for the, they oh, didn't yeah. really look yeah. at it. And then when they did, they see the hands mm -hmm. pushing, <laughs> pushing yeah. off the edge. Uh, and, of course, there's the the wonderful scene where he gets, <laughs> gets shaved. shaved. You, you know, know, they think it was still, a barber. Still, I Andy. believe that. Yeah. <laughs> I think the killer might have been a barber. I don't know why they think that. Uh, you know, yeah. if he was a barber, he'd have a... <laughs> Nice clean cut right across the well, that's, that's as, he's, as he's shaving his. <laughs> if by <laughs> some miracle or I'm drunk or something, I actually allow someone to shave me with a straight razor. As soon as they start talking about serial killing and and you know crazy bar, I'm, I'm out of there. Is like, <laughs> well, dude, he got out of there too. He, he got out. Uh, like, I can no, finish it tomorrow. Oh what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I always come back to finish my shave. The next right. day. <laughs> I'll, I'll bet he didn't go back the next day. Oh, man. All right, so we're, we're, let's do one last thing from there from our notes, which will uh, make car fans happy. We don't often talk about cars, uh, but there's two cars featured in this film. One is a 60s Porsche uh, 356 B Coupe, and in 2020, the car would be worth $100,000, um, which doesn't seem enough to me. No. And then uh, Anna How drives, much did it cost, I wonder? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, the blue car that Anna drives, uh, the when she, the, you know, hold on to the monkey bars, is a 1967 Fiat Dino Spider, mm. uh, which is also worth the same amount of money in 20, 2020 wow. uh, uh, when this was written. At, uh, See, that's the sad uh, thing. I look at some of these mo these classic movies from that era and I realize, you know, the filmmakers would have actually made more money if they had just kept the cars. Forget about oh. the film. <laughs> oh. but who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? You don't know. You still, you know. We look back at the stupid toys we played with when we were kids, and um. All right. Well, there you go. That that's Cat of Nine Tails, uh, the second film from Dario Argento, uh, and we haven't done any Crystal more No, we one. haven't. No. Well, I guess we'll have to put that on our short list of films. Yep. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this was this was a good pick, Bill. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Should have had more cats, but I enjoyed it. I'm just trying to think. Did it, was there a cat? There was rats, right? Yeah. Now see if there had been a, if there had been a cat, she wouldn't have had to worry about that family of malnourished rats. No, yeah, there was rats. Oh, well. uh, multiple types of rats. <laughs> uh, all right, Bill. Uh, let <laughs> us let us. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, what is your final thoughts about this thing? And, uh, uh, I really I enjoyed it. It's uh, it's Argento light, but I prefer that to Argento heavy. That you know the stuff that we've gotten in the last few years. So, and and uh, I know he's not fond of it, but I think it's got some of the best acting. I think he he's a guy who likes the style. He likes the 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 parts of his films that he likes are not necessarily the acting part. So he kind of gives the actors free reign. And here. He actually, they may have been Americans and maybe not his first pick, but I thought they, they did an excellent job. And uh, especially with a, with a script that's as exposition heavy and, and plot heavy, which is, again, something that's maybe not typical for Argento. He needed some good, likable actors to pull this off. And I think he did a good job. I think everyone involved with this did a good job. Yeah. So worth seeking out. Just don't expect Suspiria 2. It's not oh, that. No. no. Or 0.5 even. Right. Uh, is there a particular scene that stood out to you? Uh, I, I guess probably because it's it's the most Argento-esque, and I was kind of looking for that, the the murder, the strangulation death of, of the, the one actress, because it it's it's got some style to it, but it's also a little brutal. Yeah. Um, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying it's a favorite scene, but it's the one that reminds me, oh, yeah, it's an Argento film. Um, and she was she was a likable character and deserved a better end. Mm. Well, you know, strangulations seem to be, 
you know, like one of a kind, right? You know, you have there's and they usually feel kind of fake, but that one felt a little too real. Mm. Uh, I, I thought it was quite brutal. I, Chad, sir, your final thoughts. About, uh, I was surprised by this, this movie, you know, um, like I said, I'm usually not a fan of giallos and, and, and these type of movies, but it was good to see James Franciscus there, Carl, Carl Malden. And um, I think those guys being in it really help me keep my interest in, in what was going on. And, and it was, a, it was a well-written little film. Um, and I'll mirror what Bill said. It's not the Argento that I, the masses are uh, familiar with, I don't think, but it's, it's still a good little mystery. It was, I mean, there's some red herrings in there with the barber mm -hmm. and the girl cutting her hand at the end and, and stuff like that, that, Felt like well, I thought it. You know, I thought it could have been her, but it, then you find out it wasn't. They weren't like fake red herrings. They were like pretty mm -hmm. nice, nicely written red herrings. So yeah, I, I was really surprised by it, and I, and I really like it, and uh, I'm glad we watched it. Yep. Do you have a standout scene? Um. Well, there's like there's a couple. <laughs> there's a couple. Uh, I did enjoy um, the train scene the guy getting pushed in front of the train it was it was so over the top it, it was ridiculous looking and then but at the same time very disturbing because some, you, you know something like that could really happen but uh seeing it on film it it seemed almost out of place with the rest of the film it was so violent and and and, and shocking you know mm -hmm. uh, but but i thought that was a really cool cool kill all right, Jeff Moore, you're up next. What uh, is your uh, final thoughts about this film? Well, I'm glad uh, you picked it as well, Bill, because I keep thinking Shutter's got a great assortment of Italian uh, films on there, and I don't get over there enough to start, I don't want to use the word wading through them, but without knowing which ones are the good ones. So it's it's uh, cool to have a focus. I mean, there's a bunch of Fulci over there and, and some Argento and... Uh, I think Marguerite, and so I kind of dig into that a little more. Mm -hmm. um, I loved the train scene too, but I think the one that I really liked is the one in the uh, like the mausoleum or the or the graveyard. You know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh, nice. And then when he comes in with the. Uh, you see, you see Carl Malden at the top of the stairs uh, get kind of jerked back, or you yeah. know, somebody obviously somebody grabbed him. So you don't really know for sure what's going on. And then the door slams shut, and and uh, James France Giordani is, which sounds like an Italian mm -hmm. tailor, right, or, or, or <laughs> Cologne or something. Um, Giordani. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, I like that. I like that. And then when he comes through the door, it, it's almost one of those where you can't really tell. Is this one of those ones where he walks down the stairs and then collapses with a knife in his back or something at first? Right. He, yeah. So there, there's a lot of question to that. And then you're not sure what's going on, what's his attitude. what's. So, yeah, I, I thought that was fun. Um, it, it also had enjoyed it. Uh, had a bit of humor to it because of yeah they were a little he was a little afraid to go in there at first right 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 funny I enjoyed that I enjoyed that scene quite a bit actually um, I was genuinely surprised by this film I I knew very little about it other than the title I I really didn't even sink into me that that it was Dario Gento until I saw you know the credits and I went oh okay and um, yeah, it just surprised me with, you know, turn after turn, scene after scene, and I, I really enjoyed it. And it um, it feels like the be it, it really does feel like the beginning of something, right? The yeah. beginning of, you see mm -hmm. flourishes, you see promises, and you see, you know, you see talent on the verge of being, you know, blossoming. And and it's really interesting in that respect. And yet it's, 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 and engaging it's a uh it's it's you know got wonderful performances the mystery is is, is actually good <laughs> you know it's a, yeah. um it has you know kind of strange elements to it although not as strange as 
you know, later Jalos would have, uh, you know, it's, it's more like, what's all this science stuff about? And, and you know, <laughs> like, why is all this a problem? Who's doing this? And, um, and it's, you know, there's going to, you could, you could really, you could write a thesis about is this horror, isn't this horror? Um, yeah. I know Jeff loves that sentence, but it, to me, it does have, uh, it does have elements of that in this. And I, I would recommend it. I quite enjoyed this. And I don't understand why he doesn't like, it's one of his least favorites. It yeah, doesn't make sense. Yeah. I, there must be, it must be like, a, I would imagine it, it from the outside looking in, it has to be something to do with the experience of filming. It, right? Yeah. yeah I, I, we, this feels more like it was not fun dealing with the suits or getting the financing or something else because the product is fine. Yeah. And, and he then, might've had trouble dealing with, English actors as well, you know, translating, getting, mm. maybe he didn't feel he got the performance he wanted. And, and we're seeing it, you know, from, you know, different these are better performances than I'm used to seeing in Argento. Film. Yeah. I love Argento, yeah. but I don't watch him for the great acting. Although there are some <laughs> really good performances. So you, you mentioned Look at the, Deep Red, the, Deep Red, I would say. Had oh, yeah. Performance. Yeah. You mentioned the strangulations and when they, there's that one, especially I thought where the cord, mm -hmm. right, is around the guy's neck mm -hmm. and, that that one, it was his face above that was red. Yeah, I mean it wasn't. It was actually seemed like there was a little bit of hmm. a little tired. Maybe maybe, maybe he was just holding his breath, but it it looked pretty real. That was was that and, the photographer? Uh, yeah. And then when yes. he lays there, he's uh, a tear rolls down his eye too. Was mm -hmm. I think that yeah. was the same. yeah. yeah. You know, there, there's stuff in this that doesn't necessarily make sense. Why did he slash his face? What was what was that all about? I, I felt like that was going to be a mo, but no, he just did it because he's X Y Y. I think <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It, it was to set up the barber scene. <laughs> which, X Y Y covers a multitude which, of scenes. Which is my well, he did scene. that. He did that more than once. Mm -hmm. I thought. Yeah. And then he, yeah. yeah, he slashed the woman just out of nowhere. You know, she's just like walking through a doorway, and you hear this. And yeah. What was your favorite scene? Now? The barber scene. The barber. I, I just, barber. I just oh, loved the expression on his face. Uh, you know, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The close up on his eyes as he's watching. I Blake know. Like, it yeah. was hilarious. Yeah. That would be theater. exactly my expression. That yeah. he, James Francis spoke for me. In that scene. Although it might have been everything to do with uh, Hugo van Garetti, uh, who is Sammy Castle in disguise. Anything to do okay. with that character? What was his character's name? The GG, GG the loser. The, which GG, GG the loser. loser. I've been calling him that all day, so I'm sure he's <laughs> a ecstatic. <laughs> Sammy, we love you. We love oh, Sammy. Yeah. Sammy just had a birthday, so. Well, I love that uh, the guy who played Dr. Calabresi, uh, Carlo Aliejero. His picture in IMDb is the picture of him smashing up against a train. <laughs> that's like that's oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> that's uh, like if you're if you're the guy who played Mo Green, it's every picture is yeah. going to be you getting shot in the eye. That's yeah. just how it goes. Yeah. So there you go. That's our review of Cat on Nine Tails. Check it out. Let us know down below what you think. Of course, if you enjoyed this review and many others, you know, we have many others for you to check out. We hope you enjoy them. If you want to help us out, hit the subscribe button down below, share with a friend, hit the like button. That really does it. And of course, like I said earlier, we really want to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, we are approaching, Jeff Moore, the 150th episode. We do have, we, we do, but we do have one piece of feedback. We'll get to the feedback here in a second. We're doing okay, this first. okay. I'm doing okay. things out of order. I'm just kind of winging it, man. I'm good. Hang I'm with good. me. Hang with me. Yeah. I never know whether it's right now or just go with the flow. Throw the script out. Um, but yes, we are getting ready to do the 150th episode. I just wanted to do this before I forgot. Uh, three hours away. The, uh, we had a poll. The poll was on Patreon and on YouTube. And the results of the poll are Jeff Moore. Tell us the four films and then tell us which film we will be doing. Well, after much haggling and deal making and arguing and discussion, racking our brains so we came so up much. with so much. The, the exorcist That's chat awesome. back and forth uh filling in our swiss swiss cheese holes in our brains uh we mm -hmm. came up with the exorcist dawn of the dead uh texas chainsaw massacre and clockwork orange an excellent collection of films yeah yeah very interesting so it was close it was Very close. close. You, you want to start with the winners or you like to go in reverse? We, no, we're going to just throw the winner right out there. Okay. The winner is Dawn of the Dead. 
sneaked, sneaked past the exorcist 31 to 19 percent or 31 to 29 percent 31 to 29 uh, for those those who are on both sides if you're wondering why it's just because we were throwing both those polls together but yeah it's uh Dawn of the dead what you, you know i'm I'm actually kind of surprised we haven't done it, to be honest with you. <laughs> but it's a, yeah. it's a it's a good one to do. So that will be great. That'll be awesome. It will it's, be. It's got to be one of those movies I've seen more than just about any other movie. Mm -hmm. I either pick the five movies I've watched more often than anything else. Dawn would be one of them. Doesn't have Carl Malden in it, but does not. Is isn't Dario and Gento involved with this in some way? He is. So okay, there's yeah. that connect six because degrees of Carl Malden. I do believe I've seen the version that he yeah. manufactured for Italy, right? It's it's you know, it's not it's not my favorite version, but it's got some things in it that I like. Yeah, so I, I have this yeah. DVD set that has like I swear to you has four. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, and we, we could do a whole episode just going. The differences yeah. between the yeah. three or four episodes, and then people have Frankenstein them all together into the ultimate cut. Have they? Which, have they? Yeah, just yeah. making them longer. I, I, you know, we'll talk about it more in a couple of weeks when we did record it. But we did get to see it on the big screen a few years back, um, yeah. and that was a, a wonderful experience. Mm. Really, really did. Because unfortunately, you know, I was old enough to see that film in the seventies. Mm. I was. Had, there was no way my dad was going to take me to see that because it was released unrated. I can honestly say I saw it opening night. Did you really? Yeah. Drag uh, some of my friends to see it and they were not prepared. Actually, neither was I. So, <laughs> not oh, prepared. Uh, oh, um, game like changer. All the <laughs> Salt City. <laughs> was it the uh, uh, Gates of Hell a few years later? I wasn't prepared mm. for that one. Anyway, uh, I think we have some feedback, Jeff. You were telling me, right? We have some. Ah. We have one piece of feedback uh, on episode 147, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, ah. from our buddy Dallas Nostromo. Dallas, I, I, need, to, I need to ask him how he came, you know, how his parents came up with that name. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, anyway. Um, Dallas says, my views on this film are very similar to Doc's oh, no. as I love the entire film franchise. Franchise For me, this was my second favorite of the original five films. If you can't get enough of the Planet of the Apes and you're looking for some new material to read, Boom Studios, Studios? came Studios. out with a came out with a bunch of comics and some of them are pretty good. Hmm. Anybody Thank you, Dallas. Those? Yeah, I think they. I think Boom Studios even went as far as making King Kong meet the Apes from really? Planet of the Apes. Wow! Yeah. Oh no! That must that have been interesting. Kind of bizarre. Yeah, that would yeah, be cool. Because I, yeah, I remember the comics from the seventies, and then wasn't it in the nineties? There were, or there was like a a version of the Planet of the Apes. Somebody got the franchise and did. Maybe, maybe when the Tim Burton film came out, Dark Horse may have. If, well, no, what Dark Horse? This was like this. I know Marvel had a magazine. Oh, black yeah, yeah. And white magazine. Yeah, yeah. But no, it, there was. Oh God, I have to pull those out of my twenty nine <laughs> boxes. I got back here, but because it was they, they they made their own. Mm. It was their own stories. They didn't like mm. you know bring the other ones. Oh, okay. yeah, they, they adapt them. They just took off. He's he's got another comment on uh, the classic era that I didn't copy over, but I, I want to mention it because of something in the comment. He was commenting about uh, our review of Plan Nine from Outer Space, and he adds in. He points out that our very own Santos Ellen Jr. had a yes uh, uh, extra in the Plan Nine. Remake uh, in remake 2015. Johnny Johnson, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yeah, which is a, a fun movie too. Yeah, um, yeah. So, this is the comic from Adventure Comics. Chad, do you remember that? I remember that artwork, but I did not remember who did the art for that. I don't know. I don't know. Because uh, I gotta say, I, I've actually run into some people who looked more like apes than that guy. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't yeah. know where you're going with that, but I I bought this series when it came out. And it was adventure comics. And, 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 and. 
not the DC Adventure Comics, but no, no, Adven company uh, named Adventure uh, company Comics. Company named Adventure Comics. Yeah. Hmm. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about this. <laughs> <at some point. laughs> uh, but that was Dale Keown covered, by the way. So. You uh, want to see it again? Incredible sure. guy. Yeah, that's Dale. Yeah, Keown. it does look like it now. Yeah. That yeah, must be yeah. early, early Dale Keown. Mm. 1990. 1990. Uh, yeah. yeah. So. Worth and a walk and eight bucks. Welcome to Comic Nerd Talk, ladies. Oh my God, right, that's Chad, right. Chad, we could do it, man. I think Bill, you could too, right? Oh, full, yeah. I can hold my own, unless it's anything from the last twenty years, and I don't know anything. So. Yeah, we might have to do like comic book adaptations and movies and stuff. Ooh, Chad will be doing. What is it? The, uh, the Man from Atlantis. We got to do Man from Atlantis. <laughs> we, we damn sure do. <laughs> I right, love I love those movies and the sh TV show. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Just cheese upon cheese. Oh, was man. it Patrick, Patrick uh, Duffy, right? Patrick, Patrick yeah. Duffy, oh, Victor man. Bono. Swam oh, like a dolphin. Yeah. It did. Was that pre-Dallas pre or post-Dallas? Pre-Dallas. Pre-Dallas. Pre pre yeah, very pre-Dallas. Yeah. I doubt he, I, after it was over, I bet he thought he'd never work again. As soon as they were available on... Uh, iTunes, I bought the whole series. Did you really? The movies, the series, everything. I'll, now I have to find the comic book collection of the. Am comic I book or was Atlanta. there one episode where he fought like a monster that was like a giant seahorse or something? Yeah, yeah. No. Fakest looking thing you ever. Oh, I, I know, boy. Seahorses uh, are not scary. There is nothing you can do to make a seahorse scary. Not even the dragon ones. All right, guys, Me. we need to stop. <laughs> to get yeah. out of here. Uh, everybody listening, we want to thank you for joining us, Jeff, Bill, Chad. Of course, thank you for joining us. This was a wonderful discussion. We are going to have to do a comic book version of this so, now. Dawn yeah. of the Dead. Next. Dawn of the Dead is next. Yeah. Yes, and then back to our regular. Rotation. Schedule program. Yes. Back to a regular ro ro crappy movie did you say, Oh, rotation. Okay, rotation. <laughs> rotation, that's right. right? <laughs> I thought you said roadkill, but then I realized you meant rotation. Yeah, we'll be doing Paul Nashi's <laughs> home movies here in a while. <laughs> oh, my oh, yeah. God. oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think we already have. Like, they got released, too, so don't. Pretty don't sure Fury of the sure. Werewolf was done on a camcorder. Uh, oh, my God. Let's please say goodnight. Please. Just Paul Nishi at, at the grill with his werewolf suit going, who wants cheese? <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Do that cartoon. <laughs> <buddy>. <laughs>